Hello everyone, it's Jo from Oopsie Daisy. Something a little bit different for a pre-recorded video this month. I'm going to be setting up my monthly spread for the month of February and I'm going to do a Dutch door. So those of you who have followed Oopsie Daisy for a while will know that I do love a Dutch door spread and I've got used to setting up my whole month in advance with a monthly Dutch door which is kind of a hybrid between a monthly spread and weekly spreads all in one. So what I'm doing first of all is cutting across the page. You will notice that I don't actually take those segments out. Um, I'm going to cut the strips first of all, which is what I'm doing now. And once I've cut those, I do actually glue them down into my journal. So the reason that I do that is because by taking those segments out that go into the spine, it can alter the integrity of your journal. So you're more likely to get pages falling out. So I find by taking a handy glue roller, roller which I get through a lot of these, um, and just rolling across the strip, as you'll see that I'm doing here, and then sticking those segments down, what I end up with is a Dutch door but the spine is still intact. And the other plus is that when I put the journal together and go over onto another page after the Dutch door, you don't get that dip where you've taken pieces of the pages before out. So I find it works really well. Now you have got a little strip across, um, like a little indent where you've stuck those down. And how I remedy that generally is by using a bit of decorative washi tape. So here you'll see I'm taking the washi tape and rolling it the whole way across the two pages over the Dutch door. And what you'll see when I cut this strip is that that makes a nice topper for the, the segment that is flapping in between um, and also covers that little dip. So it's it's double purpose and also obviously it's decorative. And the theme I've gone with this month is a, a bit of a space theme. It is a homage to one of my all-time favourite TV shows, and you'll see why in a moment. Um, this little purple washi tape is relatively new to Oopsie Daisy. It's got little green alien faces in it, and I love it. Um, and the other one is our space washi from the year before, which has got little planets. Um, it's a foil washi tape, so little foil details. And of course, the planets have faces because we love to stick a, a face on an object that doesn't have a face. Um, at Oopsie Daisy, it's one of um, Kate, aka Snail Scribble's signatures to her design. So I'm going to grab my first stencil of this spread, which is the Omatron font. And I'm going to use a little handy hint that I use when I'm setting up um, anything with, with a header. And that is to work out what the middle letter is. So you'll see that I'm just writing down what I want to say on the back of a bit of paper so that I can count the number of letters in the header and find the central letter. And then I start with that central letter. This is uh, a letter N, I want a lowercase. And I work outwards from that. And by doing that, I find that I end up with my header centrally placed on the page. It's not an exact science, but it definitely helps. Um, I don't know if any of you that um, are around my age um, remember this particular TV show that I will be quoting from, um, but the header that is going across the top of the page says, I want to believe. Um, I am just doing the outline of those letters. I'm going to fill those in later. Um, and I do want a slightly different um, effect across them. So I'm just doing the outline now just to get the placing right. And what you'll see is that I've placed the wording towards the top of that segment. And I've done that for a reason, which will become obvious in a moment. Um, I found that doing voiceovers just as a little behind the scenes becomes a little bit awkward. So I am going to chat with you like you're in the room. So if I ask you questions, please pop your comments or your answers in the comments below so that I don't feel like I'm just talking to myself. It is a strange thing doing a voiceover, but I find that if I'm trying to do a voiceover whilst I'm recording something like this where I'm cutting and counting, it just ends up where I either make mistakes on my spread or I just waffle stuff that doesn't make sense. So um, I'm trying to add a voiceover afterwards, even though it does make the process a little bit longer. 
So next step in my spread is that I'm going to add a little bit of black dot grid paper to the side of the bottom section and I'm using a silver metallic gel pen. These are Edding gel pens and they actually came in a under the Rowan Trees subscription box last year, um, After Dark subscription box. They're really nice gel pens and I often have the problem when I'm using pens on black paper that they take ages to dry so it means that the process of stenciling takes a really long time because I can't put something down on top of wet pen. Um, but these actually dried really quickly, so it wasn't too bad a process at all. What I am doing is just checking the back of the stencil each time to make sure that there's no wet ink on there that I'm going to sort of smudge all over the page. Um, and also just moving backwards and forwards from the front of the word to the back of the word so that I'm giving the letters a chance to dry before I place the stencil over the top of it. So I'm writing the month on this piece of paper. It has got a torn edge, that's for a reason. Um, so the whole of the month of February, it's a silver metallic pen, which shows up really nicely and will go really well with my space theme. And just adding in the holes of the letters and the holes of the letters are always on the bottom of our font stencils and they are in alphabetical order, just in case you need to. Um, add those in. So now I've got the word February. Um, I think what I realised is that I hadn't torn it particularly straight, so I'm just adding a, a little extra piece so it's straight down the edge. And I'm going to pop that on the side of the page. Now I found the best way to add this to the side of the page is to run glue roller down the edge of the page so that it's definitely there. Um, and run a glue roller along the edge of the torn edge so I know exactly where I'm sticking. So I'm going to stick that onto the page. You can see what I'm going for now. I did roll back the washi tape because my original plan was to stick the washi over the top. Then I realised because it's black paper, you can see it through the washi. So I did end up having to peel that back and cut the paper so that it was an exact fit. Um, I've just popped off here, I realised, to go and grab my blade, which I'd left on the other desk. So I'm going to cut the edge of the paper with my blade which is very handy. I use it lots um, with my journal. Um, it was from Amazon, in case you're wondering. Um, I'm just cutting the corner of that paper so that it matches the page corner. And I'm gonna just roll back that washi tape so that I can take off the little extra piece so that it's not underlying the washi. So you can't see it through. So it's all nice and neat. And that's what I'm aiming for. So you can see where I'm going. Um, it's a kind of space theme. Um, I am just going to, I put some scrapbook paper underneath my mat because it had become curly on my way home. And now I'm just deciding what pattern I want to use as my taps. And I've gone for these rockets, um, which is a printable paper available on Epstaze UK. Um, and I'm using, you can't really see it very well in the video because they're clear, but I'm using a stencil to draw out page tabs. I'm just drawing around it in pencil. Normally I would do that on the back of the paper, but because this pattern um, is spaced in a particular way, I wanted to make sure that I had the whole rockets in my tab and they, they were similarly placed. So I'm going to cut those tabs um, with my squeezers. I've got a lot better when I'm setting up my journal. I have a little bin on my desktop now. So as I'm cutting little scraps of paper off, I do try to put them away into the little bin so that I don't end up with a complete disaster of a desktop. So at this point, I couldn't really decide whether I liked the tabs, whether I didn't like the tabs. I couldn't really visualise it. So I decided to colour in my letters, um, get those bits filled in so that I know what it looks like. Um, to give me a better idea before I added the tabs in. Um, what I've done is I'm taking the word February and I'm colouring the whole lot in silver. Now, when I'm colouring this Orbitron font, I find it easier to do all of the horizontal lines first and then do all of the vertical lines. I don't know if that's a weird colouring technique, but it helps me to do it more neatly. Um, 
just because I'm going in the same direction. And it's a very um, geometric almost font in that every, all the lines are either horizontal or vertical if they can be. So I'm just filling in all of those lines now. Um, it shows up really nicely, this silver pen on the black paper. Um, I really like these. I'm going to use them a lot, I think. You can see how much it's standing out. The light's catching it from my the lights that I've got um for filming are really picking up it's not actually white it's a silver but it looks almost white um on the film back as i'm watching it now i was also really lucky that that word fit perfectly in that space which almost never happens so i'm now grabbing our vertical numbers and dates washi tape skinny washi tape. Um, this one was actually from a couple of years ago. It's completely sold out, but you guys will be very, very excited to hear that I've finally ordered a restock of this. Hopefully should be here in March um, because we had a lot of requests to bring it back. I know a lot of people use it lots. Um, it's quite good for habit trackers. I'm just using it for a monthly spread. So I take the numbers 1 to 28 and I've stuck it on the page and then I'm going to line up the, the days of the week next to them so you know which day and which date um, go together. And then I'm going to add in some colour, I think, to the header. Um, so that I want to are going to be coloured in black. So again, I'm using my strange colouring technique of all the horizontal lines and all the vertical lines um, just to make sure that it's nice and neat. Um, I have just changed to a slightly thicker fine liner just to make the process of colouring the letters quicker. Um, and then I generally use a 04 Pigma Micron um, by Sakura um, as my go-to pen of choice. But this one, I think, it might be a Stadler. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, it's a, a 08 thickness. So a little bit of a thicker nib just to make the colouring process go faster. Um, so um, back to the subject matter of this spread. X-Files was a massive, massive favourite of mine when I was younger. I had a huge crush on David Dutkovny. Um I loved this program and a couple of years ago a friend and I went to Comic-Con um, in London and we saw David Duchovny speak and they say never to kind of meet your idols. We didn't meet him but I we saw him live. He was very grumpy. Um, he almost was sort of fed up with being asked questions about X-Files and he just wanted to talk about his book and <laughs> it was a bit bit ridiculous because ultimately you're at comic-con because you were in x-files but it doesn't make me love him any less if anything it makes me love him more because he is kind of that grumpy um maybe a bit skeptical not skeptical that's a wrong word but the character that he is i think it, it comes across well so even though he was grumpy we were okay with it we enjoyed it so anyway back to the spread I am grabbing the tabs and I have decided I'm going to stick with the rockets. So I'm just going to finish cutting out the other two tabs that I've already pre-done. What I missed when I was talking about David Duchovny is that I've added in highlighted lines on my monthly spread just to show where the weekends are. Um, I'm using a grey mild liner as my accent colour just because I think it it's nice, it fits with the theme, it doesn't detract from the brightness of the washi tape or the stickers. Uh, it fits with the the kind of silver and black text that I've got going on. And then I'm using the green and the purple as, as my highlights. So once I've cut these tabs out, I roller glue the tab and then I place it on the page. So I'm doing the middle one first because that way I can make that central and I can place the other two either side to it. What I did decide is that I wanted the tab a little bit higher so that you can kind of see the washi tape behind it. So I've just repositioned that. This glue roller tape is excellent because it does allow you to kind of lift and replace. Um, it is quite good in that way. So I'm just putting the back tab 
And the way that I'm setting up my monthly spread is that I've got three full weeks for February because I included the first week of February in the end of my January spread. I know it's a bit of a controversial topic when it comes to journaling. Some people are very, very strict about where the month starts and ends. I personally tend to just include whatever the most of that week is, or if I'm setting up a spread and I've got pay room for it. So in January, I included the end of January and the beginning of February. And this one, I've got three full weeks. And then I think the final week of February, I'm going to include in my March setup because it fit really well with the design that I was going for here. Next, I'm going to start setting up my weeks. So I'm using rainbow boxes. If you haven't seen these before, it's a set of five square stencils that can be combined in a million different ways. A million may be a bit of an exaggeration, but you get my point um, to set up different spreads. So I'm using, I think it's the blue um, daisy stencil. They're all color coded to go across the page. These are the B5 rainbow boxes because I've got a B5 journal um, and I will be placing six all the way across and then because I like symmetry I'm placing one at each end so the six across will be Monday to Saturday the one under on the right hand side will be my Sunday and the one under on the left hand side will be my meal plan for the week I'm doing exactly the same spread set up for each of the weeks so just repeating what I've done so you will see I'm placing all of my boxes and this bit's a little bit repetitive. But what I like about setting up the month in this way is that I can plan things across my month. So I can put to do's later on in the month if I want to. If I know that I need to do something in two weeks time, I can do. It also means if I want to add any other spreads for anything else that's going on, it goes after the monthly spread. So all of the weeks are together for the month and then any additional things go afterwards. So I found that this setup works for me the best. And ultimately, that is what the best thing is about journaling, is that you can experiment and find what works for you. I've used this kind of setup for about six months now. Um, and yeah, it's fantastic. The Dutch door style is fab and it enables you to have a really cohesive theme across the whole month and have all of your to-do lists organised. Sometimes I do a vertical Dutch door, so with the right-hand edge of the page cut off, um, but I think the horizontal is my favourite. So I've got my weeks all laid out. I now need to figure out how I'm going to add the day and the date to them. I considered using the Orbitron font, but in the end decided it was a bit of a chunky font and it was going to take up too much room. So I've gone to my handy sticker stash and I'm actually going to use the stickers from our Smile um, subscription box because I didn't actually use those for that month. What you will see is that I am missing a couple of numbers. Um, thankfully, I don't need to start on the first because I included the first few days in with my January spreads but I was missing the six and the seven so I've gone a bit rogue um ultimately it doesn't matter it's my journal and I know what the date is um but you'll see in a second when I go back to add in the numbers in I do just use I think an explanation mark and a star <laughs> which I know doesn't tell me the date, but I can see the dates for the rest of the week. It's only the Monday and the Tuesday that I'm missing the numbers for. The perfectionists out there might be very irritated with that, but I quite liked the style of the stickers. I thought it fit with the aesthetic of the spread. So it's what I've gone with rather than waste a whole nother sticker sheet. And you would think that I would have plenty of stickers to choose from, but I wasn't organised and I didn't remember to bring them home with me. So I'm using what I've got. This is where you can see me trying to figure out whether I can amend one with a pen, which looked ridiculous. <laughs> so I basically decided in the end it was much better for me to just have a random sticker um, just so that it looked nice. It isn't a number and it doesn't mean anything, but who cares? So... I've got the basics of the Dutch door set up. 
I'm going to add a drop shadow in the grey just to add a little bit of something extra to the bottom because it looked a bit plain. It was just boxes. So going all the way across the bottom of each box and all the way up the right hand side of each box with my grey mild liner. I'm freehanding it just because I like that for a drop shadow. Um, I think it just makes it look a little bit standout ish. I've added some stickers as well to um, the spread. You can see the little spaceship, which is really cute. And I'm going to add another sticker. And I decide at this point I may as well use up all the stickers on the sheet because. Why bother having any left? And just squeeze in this little planet. He's so cute with a little smiley face. And see how when I'm setting up my spread, I'm in the middle of doing one thing and I get distracted by stickers. <laughs> so back to the drop shadow on the page, going, doing all of my um, vertical lines first. And then I'm going to come back and do the horizontals. There we go. Nearly done now. And that space in the bottom of my weekly spread is where I will use for notes or trackers, whatever I deem I need in that week. I like to leave some space when I'm doing these Dutch doors because it gives me the flexibility to kind of add in anything that I want for that particular week. But by setting up the bulk of it, it means I can plan my week in advance or my weeks in advance. I don't go any further than a month in advance because you never know what might happen and what you might need to do. Also, I think it kind of brings focus. Um, coming in and setting up your monthly spread allows you to think about what's going on for the month ahead. So I've grabbed my silver um, gel pen again, the Edding silver gel pen, and I'm colouring in um, the word believe. So that it ties in with the silver of the word February, um, trying to make it all a cohesive in that design style. I know I've got a lot of different patterns going on, but I really like how this spread looks. I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. I think it's going to be a fun one to use. Love the alien. Um, love that purple wash tape. It's one of my favourites that Kate has designed. Um, so it's nice to finally get to use it. And I want to do something a bit different and not do a Valentine's Day theme. So aliens is, is the way forward. So just adding in my horizontal lines with my strange colouring technique. And we're very close to the end now, guys. So I really hope that you've enjoyed watching the monthly setup with my little voiceover. Um, I love these spreads. Hit me up in the comments below if you would like to see something different or you're happy to see me set up my monthly spread each month um hopefully by doing it this way it means that in my plan with me's I can be experimental and do different things and get that monthly spread organized and recorded so that it's archived to watch back later but I'm really pleased uh, I love how this has turned out so thanks for listening thanks for watching and hopefully I'll catch you next month take care